Said I'm a sports fanatic. I, I'm a working member of the media in Minnesota where I live with the Vikings, the Twins, the Wild, the Timberwolves, so I've had a lot of heartache over the last 20 years, but I've had a unique seat at the table being in the locker room, in the clubhouse, the dugout, the press box, and, and it's been fascinating studying championship teams. I've learned that the same characteristics that are common in peak performers in sports are common in peak performers in business. So my program this morning is based on two series of books that I've written. This top series, Raising Stanley, Raising Lombardi, I interviewed over 500 professional athletes and coaches for that series that all had one thing in common. They were all champions. And I could only ask them why those teams won. And much like Jim Collins did in his iconic book, Good to Great, where he took about a thousand companies and whittled them down to his top ten, I too was looking for the same sorts of trends and patterns and metrics that were common among those teams and the results were fascinating. Now the bottom series is called The Code. Now you know in sports we've got rules. There's black and white rules that are designed to keep the game honest, but mixed in between these black and white rules are some shades of gray. They're called unspoken, unwritten rules or codes. And if you break these codes in sports, there's consequences. That means you might get lose some teeth in hockey, or you might get drilled in baseball, and it's the same in business. So my program about being a champion, it's about winning the right way. You'll be tempted to take shortcuts along the way, and, and, and you can take steroids and have a great season, but to win long term requires a level of commitment. So as I've learned, champions, the people who we like, who we trust, the people who just get it, the people who we want to do business with, they have a very unique DNA. I want you to think about your DNA. As I've learned from all my research, champions, they're internally driven to succeed, and that starts with passion. You can't fake passion. You're either real and authentic or fake and phony, and that was my guy, Kirby Puckett. That was game six, 1991 World Series. I was there, man. Anyone else there? It was awesome. I'm still a little bit hungover, and my hand still hurts from high-fiving random citizens, but it was amazing, and I think of Kirby, and I think about what's unique about his DNA, and it's the smile on his face. Kirby loved his job. You know the old cliche, find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. First one in the office, last one to leave. That was Kirby. I miss him. He's up above rooting on for my twins, but man, that smile was infectious. If somebody was having a bad game or an error or they were in a slump, Kirby was the first guy there to pat him on the butt. Come on, man. Hang in there. They play us, pay us to play baseball. Kirby grew up poor on the south side of Chicago in the Robert Taylor homes. There were no scouts scouting Kirby. He'd ride his bike from, from home to practice to his factory job and back, and he grounded out through high school and junior college, said it only took him six years in the minor leagues to become an overnight sensation, and when he made it to the show of the big leagues, there was no looking back. He was so incredibly passionate about what he did. He brought such great energy. He kept everyone loosey-goosey, telling jokes, having fun. It was amazing passion. What are you really passionate about? See, here's the thing I've learned. If you're not really passionate about what you do, then you need to think about what you do. Because people choose to do business with, to be influenced by people that are incredibly passionate about what they do. No, I get it. Maybe you didn't grow up as a kid saying, man, I can't wait to manage your family dollar store. Maybe you did. I don't know. Maybe your passion is hunting or fishing or golfing or traveling or spending time with your kids or your grandkids. I don't know, whatever it is. But you better be pretty darn good at your day job if that's what it is so you have enough time and money and freedom to do the stuff that you're truly passionate about. Otherwise, you're just pushing the rock up the hill. I want you to think about how your passion ties into what you do. This is the 2002 Detroit Red Wings. You guys know I'm from Minnesota, I'm a big hockey guy. But this is a pretty iconic team. I interviewed a lot of these guys for my book, Raising Stanley. And I asked a lot of these players, were you surprised when you won the cup that year? And to a man, every single player said, absolutely not. That was their expectation. That was their goal. See, their, their coach, Scotty Bowman, the, the guy on the right, he's the winningest coach in the history of the National Hockey League. 13 Stanley Cup rings this guy's got. He even named his freaking kid Stanley. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I said, Scotty, what's the secret sauce? Because he did it with multiple organizations. And he said, Ross, it's not about having the best players. It's about having the right players. That team, they had a whole line of Russians, tic-tac-toe. They had a whole line of Swedes, tic-tac-toe. The chemistry was amazing. I mean, there's a salary cap in hockey. It's not like you can just be the New York Yankees and buy a bunch of A players. I'm sorry if you're a Yankees fan, but that's just not fair. So they had to get their A players to coach up 
They're B and C players. The Red Wings are amazing. I just worked with the Red Wings. They brought me in to work with this organization. And they've got the longest winning streak in all of professional sports in North America right now. 24 consecutive seasons and counting. The Red Wings have made the playoffs. It's unbelievable. You're a Red Wings fan? Cool. Yeah. It's amazing. And they do it playing in the oldest, crappiest, lowest revenue producing arena, the Joe, in a city that, oh, by the way, filed bankruptcy. You know what they do? They find ways to win. They do more with less. Scotty had this saying, a goal without a plan, it's just a wish. What's your plan for 2015? That's Pat Summit, head coach of the Lady Volunteers at the University of Tennessee. She's the winningest coach in the history of women's college basketball. And for Pat, it was all about trust. How many of you would say trust is an important part of your business? Well, how do you build trust? For Pat, it was a process, a process that began when she recruited not necessarily the best players, but the right players. That meant getting in her car and on planes during the offseason to visit the homes of these young ladies she was recruiting for her team. She wanted to take, talk to their parents and grandparents and their teachers and coaches and friends. She wanted to find out which kids were winners in junior high and high school, which kids did drugs, which kids got good grades, which kids were team captains, leaders, open-minded, which kids were popular and likable, which which kids were coaches' kids? Which kids grew up on farms and shared her strong work ethic and spiritual values? She wanted to get to know them, so she'd follow them on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And when those parents trusted Pat with their most prized possession, their child, to come to Knoxville, Tennessee, they were all in. Those kids loved Pat. They trusted her. She became their mom away from mom. They'd run through the proverbial brick wall for her. She was such a great teacher. She wouldn't just tell them how to do things. She'd get in there and get dirty and show them. She got her A players to coach up her B and C players, and she was able to create a culture of winning. She earned those kids' trust. And when they graduated, and they did, because Pat made sure of it, many of them would commemorate the moment by getting a Lady Vols tattoo. Now, how many of you have tattoos of your companies on your body? Can I get a show of hands? Yeah? You know, I just worked with Anytime Fitness. They're the largest fitness chain in the world, and they were just named as Fortune's Franchise of the Year. They beat out McDonald's and Subway. At their annual conference this year, they had their 1,000th franchisee up on stage getting a giant purple cartoon logo of their, of their corporate logo on their bicep. I mean, it's amazing. One-third of their owners have tattoos. I mean, that's when a job isn't a job, it's when a job is a career. Those people are so passionate about what they do. As I learned, they don't run gyms, and they certainly do not sell health club memberships. They help to change people's lives. What do you do? Do you sell insurance? or do you help to change people's lives? Those tattoos are forever, and that's how they feel about their jobs. They build trust one client at a time, and they make them feel like they're their only client. How are you building trust with your clients? It's a process, a long process. It takes a long time to build and a second to destroy, but at the end of the day, we know we like to do business with people who we trust.